This video will teach you all about the different types of measurement, observations, and scientific notation. Measurements, as you might expect, are a type of observation. There are two types. The first type is qualitative. These are descriptive. So for example, if something is hot, cold, heavy, light, big, blue, or furry, these are all examples of qualitative measurements because they don't include any numbers. Quantitative measurements, however, are the opposite in that these are observations made with a measuring instrument and include both a number and a unit. For example, using a ruler, a balance, a thermometer, graduated cylinder, these are all measuring instruments that we use to make these observations. The measurement 13.5 degrees Celsius, 25 kilograms, and 17 liters are all examples of quantitative measurements because they include both a number and a unit. Accuracy is how close a measurement is to the true or accepted value. For example, if you have a 50 gram mass and you put it on the balance three times and you get the following data, 50 grams would be accurate. If you got a mass of 32.18 grams, that would not be considered accurate because it's not close to the true value. And then if you got a value of 49.99, that's pretty good. So we would say that that is accurate. Precision is how close multiple measurements are to each other. For example, if you take the weight of a 50 gram mass, you would have the following data. Both of these data represent both accurate and precise data. The reason why they're accurate is because the mass should have a mass of 50 grams. They're also precise because you can see we got the same measurement multiple times. However, it is possible to be not accurate yet to be precise. So what that means is your data would look something like this. Notice that this data is not accurate because it's not close to that 50 grams, but it is precise because we got the same measurement over and over again. A lot of students have trouble usually remembering this, so here's an easy way to remember. If something is accurate, think of the word accurate for the C in the word accurate as being correct. If something is precise or has precision, Notice reproducibility is another word that starts with R. So use the R in precision to think about reproducibility. That'll most likely help you remember. Scientific notation is up next. And in chemistry, obviously we're concerned with matter. And our matter could be really, really large samples or really, really small. So we have to have an easy way to express really large or really small numbers. And that's what scientific notation is. There are two parts to every scientific notation. There's the coefficient and power of 10. The coefficient is always going to be a number between 1 and 10. It can include 1, but not 10. What that means is, is that you are never going to have a um, number that's going to be anything greater than 9.99999 repeating. If you did, then you would have to move the decimal over 1. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. The power of 10 is really just an exponent. And so if you have a coefficient that is going to be greater than 1, then you're going to have a positive exponent. If you have a number that is less than 1, then you're going to have a negative exponent. So what that really means, if it's greater than 1, you're going to have a, large, a fairly large number. If it's smaller than 1, you'll have a very small number. Here are some examples. You're going to write the following numbers in scientific notation. So for the number 41,000, that's a large number. That number is bigger than 1. That means that your exponent is going to be positive. Your coefficient, again, has to be less than um, 10, and it can include 10. So what that means is that your coefficient needs to be 4.1. Your exponent is going to reflect the number of decimal places that you moved over to the left in order to put that decimal point in between the 4 and the 1. So what that means is this number in scientific notation would be 4.1 times 10 to the 4th. For number two, again, your coefficient has to be a number between 1 and 10. It can include 1, but not 10. So obviously, the coefficient can't be 29. It would have to be 2.9. So your coefficient would be 2.9, and then you would have times 10. Now, the exponent is going to be negative, and the reason why it's going to be negative is because this is a number less than 1. Another way to look at it is you were going to have to move this decimal point a total of 1, 2, 3 decimal places to the right. And so that means that your exponent would have to be to the minus 3. 
For the number 60,000, that would be 6 times 10 to the 4th. The coefficient wasn't too tricky here because, again, this is a number that's going to be less than 10. For number 4, this is a fairly small number. Again, your exponent is going to be less than 1, and so therefore it's going to be negative. So again, to move that decimal point in between the 1 and the 3, right, the 1.32 would be your coefficient, you're going to have to move it a total of 7 times to the right. And then finally, in number 5, this is a fairly large number, so that means that your exponent is going to be positive, and you're going to have to move that decimal point a total of 8 decimal places to the left in order to put the decimal point in between the 1 and the 2. This is where you're going to need your calculator. So preferably you should be using the one that you are going to use in chemistry this year. I recommend that you use a scientific calculator and this has a lot more buttons than a regular calculator that has just the arithmetic function. The first thing that you want to do, depending on your calculator, is um, locate to see if there's an EE or EXP button. Depending on the type of calculator, you may have a times 10 with a caret, um, but if you have an EE or EXP button, it's better that you use that one. So when you put these two things into your calculator, you want to multiply them just like you see there, so that when your answer comes out, it should look like that. You do the same thing with the second one. Your answer should look something like that. And then notice, these two are already in scientific notation, and so when you plug them into your calculator, you're going to want to put 7EE, or EXP, depending on your calculator type, to the 6th. And then for your um, calculator um, 8 times 10 to the 5, you're going to want to type in 8EE, or EXP, 5. Notice when you do this, if you're using that EE or EXP button, you do not need the times 10 at all. By just putting the 5 in there, that works. And so when you do that, you should get that answer. Hopefully this was helpful to you as you prepare to learn about different types of measurements and using scientific notation. If you're having trouble with scientific notation, make sure you see your teacher as soon as possible because this is something that you're going to be using all school year.